To get started with SyncThing on TrueNAS scale, head to the Apps page in the UI. Before installing SyncThing, you'll need to go to the Settings menu and choose Advanced Settings. From here, uncheck the box beside Enable Host Path Safety Checks. This will allow both SyncThing and other file sharing protocols, such as SMB or NFS, to access your files at the same time. Check the Confirm box in the Warning dialog, then click Continue. Scroll down and click Save to confirm your changes. Once you've completed this process, you can install SyncThing from the TrueNAS Applications Catalog. Select the Available Applications tab and search for SyncThing by its name. Be sure to select the Enterprise version of SyncThing for this tutorial. If you only see the regular version, you'll have to change trains. Select the Manage Catalogs tab and choose to edit the TrueNAS catalog from the three-dot menu on the side. Under your preferred trains, put a checkbox beside the Enterprise option, then click Save. Return back to Available Applications and search again. When you're ready to install SyncThing, leave the configuration untouched until you reach the storage configuration. Make note of the mount path that you're installing for your data, which defaults in this case to Data1, and then select either an empty or an existing dataset from your TrueNAS machine. In this case, we're selecting the dataset named Data01 inside of a pool named SyncThing. This dataset is already shared over SMB, so it's important that we disable the host path safety checks earlier. Click the Save option, then return to the Installed Applications tab to check on the progress. Once the app is ready, it will show as active. Click the Web Portal button to launch the SyncThing UI. By default, SyncThing installs without a password set, so the first thing we'll need to do will be to set one. Use the Settings button to open the menu, navigate to the GUI tab, and set a username and password. Once you've saved these settings, you'll be prompted to log back into the SyncThing UI again. Now that you've set this up on one TrueNAS scale machine, we'll have to repeat it on the second. Again, remember to uncheck Enable Host Path Safety Checks to prevent issues with using SyncThing and file sharing protocols on the same dataset simultaneously. Once you've installed SyncThing, make sure you set a password on the second copy as well. Now that you have two copies of SyncThing running, we need to get them connected with each other. This is done by sharing an identification code. Let's return to our first SyncThing install and then click on the short version of the code shown as a URL beside the identification option on the right hand side. Because we'll be setting up both copies of SyncThing through the same web interface, we can copy this identification code to our clipboard. If you're installing SyncThing's app on a mobile device, you could also scan the provided QR code with your camera. Go to your second SyncThing install and click Add Remote Device. In the Device ID field, paste in the device ID of your first SyncThing install. We can leave the device name blank as it will be auto-populated once the two devices connect. We'll skip the Sharing tab for now, but we'll need to set some advanced options in order to establish our network connection. The SyncThing Enterprise app does not use automatic global or local discovery for security purposes, so you'll need to enter the address of your first SyncThing install using the format tcp colon slash slash, the IP address, and followed by the default SyncThing port of 22000. Once you've finished, click the Save button. To complete the connection, return to your first SyncThing install, and you'll see a prompt to accept the incoming connection. Click the Add Device button. You'll notice the second system's device ID and name have been auto-populated. Move to the Advanced tab and enter the second system's address using the same TCP format, including the port. Save these settings, and the Remote Devices pane will refresh once the two devices have connected with each other. Expand the details to ensure that the connection type is correct. In this case, the systems are on the same local network, so the direct connection of TCP LAN is accurate. Now that your systems are communicating, it's time to set up a folder. Choose the Add Folder button on the left. SyncThing will automatically create a unique folder ID that it uses to identify the folder to all your connected systems. 
You can manually change this if desired, but it must be unique among all systems. You can also set a descriptive label in the Folder Label field. Under Folder Path, you'll need to enter the mount path you chose during the SyncThing app install. Note that this is the mount path and not the host path. Change to the Advanced tab. Note that the Ignore Permissions option defaults to being checked. This should remain checked in order to allow SyncThing to copy files regardless of ownership. TrueNAS stores your ownership and access control lists separately as ZFS attributes, and we've left the options enabled below to synchronize ownership and extended attributes by default. Return to the Sharing tab and check off the option to share this folder with our other scale system. Click the Save button. SyncThing will begin scanning the local contents of the folder and indexing it for replication. We can now switch to our second SyncThing instance, which has raised an alert in its icon. The note shows an incoming request from Scale01 to share the folder, as well as any descriptive label you might have assigned. Click Add to enter the sharing wizard on Scale02. You'll notice that the descriptive label and the folder ID are pre-populated, but we'll need to change the folder path to match the mount point of our dataset on this system. In this case, we set the scale 02 system up to use a mount point of data 2, so this should be entered here. Click the sharing tab, and you can see that the origin system of scale 01 has already been selected. On the advanced tab, you can see that the required settings for permissions, ownership, and extended attributes are already checked as well. Click Save in this window. The shared folder will now start synchronizing data between the two systems. You can monitor this process from both the folder and the remote device view. Once the two systems have been connected, we can easily add a file to one system and SyncThing's automatic scanning process will identify the new file and sync it to the other one with no further interaction required on your part. SyncThing will also handle deletions across both connected nodes.